I'm gonna compare these four Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems to each other. They're all the Netgear Orbi brand. We got it from least expensive to most expensive and essentially from least powerful to most powerful right here. Now I've done speed test range tests, so we'll go over all those numbers. I have tested them with the following Wi-Fi 7 devices in the same exact scenarios right here. Some of these I actually have to retest just for this video, just cause it had been a while since I needed to test them. And if you happen to have one of the later iPhones like the 17 Pro Max or one of the later Pixels like the Pixel 10 Pro XL, these can't go quite as fast as those two, even though these are Wi-Fi 7 devices, specifically the 17 Pro Max and the Pixel 10 Pro XL, they can't go quite as fast as the other two. So just keep that in mind. All right, so what is a mesh system and what's the point of getting it and how is that better than a router? Well, essentially a mesh system is a router and a satellite that work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. You can have more than one satellite as well. You can have a like two satellites or three satellites all working together with the router to increase that Wi-Fi coverage. So if you don't have coverage in one side of your house and on the other side of your house, everything's very working very well, but on that other side, that router just is having trouble sending that signal that far, that's what a mesh system is designed to do because you basically place these anywhere from 25 to 40 feet apart, depending on your place, you know, depending on obstructions and stuff. But essentially these work together to increase that coverage. And yes, you are able to use the ethernet ports on the satellite, even if it's wirelessly talking to the main one. And I've done separate videos on this where I actually show you guys the advantage of, of doing that because it actually goes pretty fast. Okay, we're gonna start off with the Orbi 370. And I should mention that all the sizes and shapes for all the Orbeez, they're exactly the same between router and satellite. However, the satellite is actually different in the back uh, versus the router. The router has that internet port. So we'll start off with the router. We have the sync button. We got the factory reset. We have the 2.5 gigabit for the LAN. We have a 2.5 gigabit for the internet. And we have the power port right here. And on the bottom, we do have the screw holes. If you want to get the optional accessory, you can mount it. You have some vents on the bottom and on the top as well. For the satellite, we just have basically all the same stuff, except we just have a 2.5 gigabit single port. Now, the good thing is that everything on this is 2.5 gigabit, so there is no drop in speed. The bad thing is on the satellite, there's only one port. It would be nicer if it had two 2.5 gigabit ports. That would make it better. Next, we get to the 770, and it's a pretty big jump from the 370 in terms of size, and also you get more ports, so there's an advantage there. So again, the same sync, reset. Now we have a 2.5 gigabit for the internet, but we have three other 2.5 gigabit ports for the LAN, which is much better. We also have the power port, and just like the 370, you can mount this if you get the optional accessory, and there's some vents, a little bit of vents, not a whole lot, and there's a little bit on the top as well. And for the satellites, you have two 2.5 gigabit ports and all the other same buttons and everything. And yes, this can also be mounted as well. Moving on to the RB870, it does get slightly larger than the 770, but the router has more ports and it can actually take internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits. However, going out of this thing actually caps it to 2.5 gigabits. So you have four other 2.5 gigabit LANs. We got the same buttons, uh, reset power, and this one can also be mounted with the optional accessory. We got some vents on the bottom and a little bit at the top as well. And the cool thing about the satellite of the 870 is you have four 2.5 gigabit ports. And that's the other awesome thing that you get with the 870. And again, same exact thing, mounted and optional. You can mount it with optional accessory. Then you get to the Beastie Orbi 970, which this one is slightly larger than the 870. You get the same sync, same reset. You have four 2.5 gigabit ports. But what makes this super special is that your internet speeds can support up to 10 gigs and you also have a LAN that can go out at up to 10 gigs. So there essentially is no speed loss at up to 10 gigs. So go in at 10, come out at 10. And we have the power port and this one can also be mounted with the optional accessory. And you got some vents along the sides over here on the front side and towards the top as well. And also a little bit over here as well. And the satellite, even though it has less ports than the 870, it does have a 10 gigabit port. So you can actually go out at 10 and come into 10 on the satellite. So the 970 is very special. You can also optionally mount this as well with the optional accessory. And these are their respective power supplies. 
We're going to start off with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless, of course, the route itself can't go that fast. So in my case, the 370 and the 770 can't go quite as fast. So these would actually be capping my speeds to 2.5 gigabits. Now, the Orbi 870, this one is a little bit of a unique case because this one has a 10 gig port right here. So it can support up to my five gig speeds. However, as soon as I come out to go to my computer, it's actually capping those speeds to 2.5 gigabits. So when I do an ethernet speed test on the 370, the 770, and the 870, I'm actually capped to 2.5 gigabits. The only one that lets me see my five gig speeds is the 970 because there is no cap because this one has the two 10 gig ports. Now the Wi-Fi results are a different story because typically Wi-Fi can't go as fast as ethernet usually except in the case of the 870 because again there's a special exception here because when my internet goes in at 5 gigs to this 10 gig port at this router it still can support up to 5 gig speed so therefore if you bring a fast enough wi-fi device because the 870 has a very fast wi-fi you can actually exceed your ethernet speeds on wi-fi only if you're close to this router everything else is typically slower in terms of the Wi-Fi speeds compared to its Ethernet speeds. So the 370 still did fairly well, the 770 obviously did better, and the 870 and 970 did better than both of those, with the 970 taking the lead. No surprise there. Now to find the true performance of these systems, I need to do a local speed test. So I make my computer into the server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. In the case of the wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary satellite, which then jumps to the router, which then goes to the server. And this way I isolate the mesh system itself because I'm no longer relying on the public speed test server, which can be busy at times, or my ISP, my internet service provider. Usually you get better speeds this way, but in the case of the 770, it couldn't go quite as fast as its internet speed test, which is kind of a rare occurrence, but that's what it was. Whereas the 770 was pretty much capping at its up to 2.5 gigabit speed. So very well with the 770. The 870 is also unfortunately capped because my computer is acting as a server, which means there is an ethernet going from the router to my computer. So again, that 2.5 gigabit is actually capping those speeds. Other than that, it's actually doing fantastic. And the 970 is the true king here because this thing is just flying. The fact that it got over four gigs on the up and down is absurd. Moving on to the wired backhaul, we pretty much got very similar speeds to their single router configurations. Now moving on to wireless backhaul, you could see a pretty big difference between the 370 and the rest of them. The 370 is just not doing well in this test. It's a dual band system with a slower speed rating compared to the rest of them. The 770 really takes it up a notch compared to the 370 and even though the 970 did the best in this test, the 870 Overall, because it also costs less than the 970, performance-wise, 870 was the most impressive because it was actually really, really close to the 970 in terms of performance. So 870 is just amazing. Obviously, the 970 is better, but compared price-wise, 870 was actually doing phenomenal in this test. Next, we jump into the range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. So essentially, the more obstructions you have, the less range you're gonna get versus the more of an open area you're in, typically the more range you'll, that you'll get. Now all of these are tested in the same exact environment, so let's look at the numbers. 370 drop, the 770 drop, but not by much. The 870 pretty much didn't drop. And really the reason for this is because the 870 has a very powerful Wi-Fi system, and really its main limitation is that 2.5 gigabit port. And then we move on to the 970, and this is where it did drop. It's still faster than the 870, but it was a pretty big drop from the 4000. Now, I go outside my place at 50 feet away, and across the board, there are drops, especially in the upload section, but the 770, 870 are still doing fairly well. Not much of a drop from their previous 20 feet. The 970 did drop more, but still actually is still taking the cake at 50 feet away. 970 is still taking the cake. And finally at 100 feet we could see that 370 and 770 are actually a lot closer to each other whereas the 870 is taking the cake for the download and the 970 is taking the cake for the upload. For setup a configuration using the Netgear Orbi app, it's a very simplified app and it walks you through the process of making a basic setup and it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name which is an SSID and a password 
and then you're good to go from there. Now, if you want to pick the same SSID and password as your existing router you're replacing, your devices should automatically connect to it, but just remember that the SSID and password, they're both case sensitive. Okay, so in the app, it's really, again, designed to be very simple. So you get your Wi-Fi name, your guest Wi-Fi, you could do a speed test on there for the router itself if you wanted to. There's super basic parental controls for more advanced parental controls that does require a separate subscription. And then there's also Netgear Armor. They us it usually comes with some day trial depending on which one you're getting. And that offers additional protections. If you want that, it's optional. And then you could do a firmware upgrade and that's pretty much the extent of it. There's like a few other minor things there. Now, if you wanna really customize it, you go to orbylogin.net and that gives you a lot more options. So you get all those similar options there, but with more options. And then you could pretty much pick your Wi-Fi name and password, all that other stuff. You could set up VPNs over there. You could set up an Internet of Things Wi-Fi. And there's just a lot more control there that you can do. You can also save your configuration. And there's just a lot, a lot more options when you go to the Orbi app. Uh, sorry, not the Orbi app. When you get to the or be web interface. And I should mention that some of these have slightly more options because there is that additional six gigahertz band. So there are slightly more options as you kind of move up, but mostly the same. To summarize, the Orbi 370 is very good if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits and you're planning on using wired backhaul because the wireless backhaul performance is not great on the 370. And the other limitation is you only have one ethernet port on the satellite and only two on the router. However, it does cost a lot less, so there is an advantage there. Moving on to the 770, this is a better choice for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds because you get more ethernet ports both on the router and on the satellite and you get faster wireless speeds and you get better range overall. And you also get better Wi-Fi speeds if I didn't mention that because you're get, actually getting closer to that because it's a tri-band over the dual band. But it does cost more, so do keep that in mind. Then we move on to the 870, and this is really the best choice for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds because you're getting fast wired performance, fast wireless performance, very good range, and you're getting more ports. And the main router can actually support internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits, but again, I did mention the ethernet limitation for coming out of it. And the best mesh system is the 970 because now there is really no limitation up to 10 gig speeds because you have two 10 gig ports. It's a quad band unit. It's faster and for the most part has better range than all of them. For the most part, not, not in all cases, but um, overall. And I should mention that the Orbi 970 in general is actually my favorite mesh system to date. Yeah, as of now. So even compared to other amazing mesh systems, the Orbi is my favorite because it's very simple. It just works and it's very fast. So I really, really like that about the Orbi. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. Which one do you guys planning on getting? And um, which one do you guys have? What are your speeds? And uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.